You have just crash landed on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smothering wreckage of your ship. You are now completely alone in a strange world, desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you are desperate for friendship. <laughs> Won't someone on this godforsaken rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do, you're not that picky. Hang on, what's this? Is someone approaching? Okay, so we just got owned by gravity and apparently now we have to choose someone to befriend and engage on wacky friendship shenanigans. Yes, someone's approaching. A strange gray-skinned alien clad in blue. Perhaps they will make for a good friend? Oh no. <laughs> Dear God. And just what are you supposed to be? Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in some need of, of medical treatment. You're also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Oh. Oh my. Hmm. <laughs> oh, how funny this is. How very droll. You... you want to be my friend? It's too much. This... this thing at my doorstep wishing to know me in any capacity. The hilarity somehow escapes my ability to capture with medical laughter. How rare. You apologize for presumption's request, you hang your head, turn around, and begin to walk away. And just what the fuck do you think you're doing? <laughs> okay, <laughs> who invited you to leave? You stop in your tracks obediently and turn to face her again. Your possibly broken ribs are throbbing in pain, but this does not strike you as the right moment to exhibit weakness. <laughs> It dawns on me that we may have gotten off on the wrong saunter pod. Where are my manners? Ghastly behavior on my part. After all, it isn't your fault you seem to be some sort of hideous freak, is it? That such a tragic creature cannot be held responsible for such a devastating shortfall of social competence. <laughs> it would weep for you, really. Except that your crying out of three eyes at once gets a bit messy, so instead, I think I will be saving my tears for someone less offensively worthless. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside, or if she's just got you to stay a little longer so she could insult you some more. You try to remain stoic, while your confrontation new friend decides that you, what to do with you. Unfortunately, you sniffle slightly. Oh. Oh my, oh dear, you're sad. <laughs> so amusing to me, mildly endearing even. Perhaps I will decide later if it's endearing once I have more information. It's entirely possible I will retroactively decide it's disgusting. But for now, try to put yourself at ease, you completely pitiful fool, not one more sniffle. Do you understand? You nod, while practicing explanatory control of your nose. You have gotten yourself so agitated, I wonder why you have nothing to worry about for me. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Of course I will be your friend. Conditionally, I mean, there is a chance that this designation will be formalized if you behave in ways that I approve of, starting now. Let's call it a friendship in progress, agreed. I'm scared. <laughs> Your heart swells. This is what you've been waiting for. A new friend. Oh gosh. All you have to do now is try not to fuck anything up. Possibly for many hours. Come into my hive. This way. After me. You look like you could use nourishment. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to become the nourishment. I don't know what it is that whatever you are eats, generally, but it doesn't matter. You eat whatever it is I have on hand. Okay, these three eyes are making me very, very upset. If I tell you to, how does that sound? How does it sound? 
It sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. It sounds fine, I guess. Hmm. It sounds fine, I guess. Get the fuck out of my face and never come back. <laughs> oh no. We got rejected. It sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. Obviously, it sounds good. You definitely enjoy it. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreement coming from one of my friends. Okay, I don't like her. I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. You will say, oh yes, absolutely. You nod as enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize one of her arms is probably broken too. You would try to make sure she doesn't notice though. It would probably leave a bad impression. <laughs> Come with me. There is something I need your help with. Oh no. You follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. You suppose she's going to fix you something to eat soon, as promised. You pass through her kitchen and out of the other side to another room. Okay, you guys dinner can wait. This way, try not to let any of her broken limbs slow you down. A good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments cause me any inconvenience. Oh, so you guess she doesn't know you're injured? Fair enough. You hobble a little faster though, another door into a much darker room, and now down a flight of stairs. Oh no, we're, go we're being kidnapped. It's hard to see, there are torches along the wall ahead and monstrous noise rumbles below. Don't mind her, she's hungry. She's always hungry, though. What's that? You're hungry too? I have not forgotten. What sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for? Okay. You didn't remind her that you're hungry. You thought it, though. Can she read your mind? You hope not. That's going to make this friendship in progress a bit awkward. Here we are. This is where you will be most useful to me as a friend. Um... <laughs> You look around. With a sense of relief, you see a sign of whatever hungry thing was grumbling down here. You are less retrieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shapes and size. We're going to be kidnapped for sure. One of them makes eye contact with you. <laughs> the boy is the same kind of alien as her, horns and all. He has a dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seems to plead with you. He struggles to say, help. Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Help low. He says. Help low. By which I mean, hello, of course, looks like you're the new friend in progress chosen by the great and beautiful Ardata. Oh no. She's my savior, my reason for being. I have nothing without her. I will, I will hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she permitted. No. You turn away from this boy, you don't want to hear anything he has to say ever again. Mm -hmm. Don't mind him, he's always regarded himself as a comedian. <laughs> Come over here, this is what I need your help with, if you're going to have any value to me as a friend. You're led to a dank corner of this well, you're going to call it like you see it. This dungeon. <laughs> your new friend has a dungeon full of sad, suffering children. And presumably a monster lurking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. Then again, social beggars like you can be choosers. <laughs> I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. You have saved me time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time with it. You doubt this because it's still in the, its box, looking completely untouched since it was brought down here. It's a box containing a table. A table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person trapped on its surface. I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver in case you need it. I will assume all the required tools are contained within the box. You take the screwdriver with your known broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. You don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal and friendly banter, perhaps a sling for your arm and a remedial balm for your ribs. Still, you open the box without a protest. Hold on. Before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. Oh no, she's a streamer. She's 
She sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. A video feed comes to life with several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of the screen an unflary angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. Other rectangle contains shots of the other kids in cages around the room. You suppose cameras are pointing at them too. We had no idea this friendship came with the perk of instant stardom. <laughs> now you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable looking chair facing you and holding a callus, swishing me around some vicious liquid it contains. You have all the parts spread out on the floor, organized according to their labels and instructions. You try to remember the last time you assembled something like this. You don't recall enjoying it. To be perfectly honest, this doesn't look like it will be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry, is this activity not your liking? You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. <laughs> you love shit like this. It's what you were born for, you say, as you swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Forget the thing you just thought, completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open the little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. This is literally my, my entire nightmare. Where could most of the screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. You look at your screwdriver, then suddenly the screws, every single one requires an Allen wrench. Does this even come with an Allen wrench? What's an Allen wrench? The instructions seem to suggest it does. You look around, but don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? Maybe you lost some of the screws too, damn it. You begin to sweat and look around nervously. You check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. You grip the screwdriver a little tighter. You wonder what to do next. Okay, so I learned from my mistakes and I'm saving it. Get the hell out of there? I mean, you should have done this the moment she just led you to a dungeon. Just do your best assembling the table. This is what friends are for. Okay, let's go with that. You decide it would be best not to com not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Your friend would probably consider it bad for him. You just make do and twist in all the screws by hand as best as you can. God damn! Your broken arm isn't making this any easier. You favor the other one and prop pieces into place precariously, leaning against each other while you nudge them into position with your legs so the screw holds the line. It's really frustrating work. You're not going to lie. As you're twisting in the first screw, the grooves slip and the screw gets stuck, but you've already turned it too tight, now it's hard to get it out. You twist it in reverse harder, but your fingers slip and the table pieces start to slide, they're going to fall. You react to catch them, but it's too late, the heavier piece tips over and slams you in the broken rim, so it's way to the floor, ow! It hits the floor with a bang, the stuck screw pops out and goes bouncing 10 or 15 feet away, settling deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. God, you're probably going to need to get that, you hear a light trickle. Good. Good. She takes another sip from her callus and settles even more comfortably into her chair. Is she enjoying this? You think she's enjoying watching you struggle to put this stupid thing together, maybe a little too much. Nevertheless, you continue. A friend is a friend, and you don't like to lay your friends down. You've committed yourself to this project. You will get the screw out from under there a bit later, maybe when you need the final screw. You turn your attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. You place the biggest part, the table platform, flat on the floor. The legs will be pointy upper if they were attached. You position one leg in the right spot, in alignment with the holes, sit on the table platform, and steady the leg with your feet. You grab another screw and concentrate. <laughs> she sounds so pleased. It's strange, you admit, for watching this sort of activity to make someone so happy. But you also have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually, to feel useful, wanted, <laughs> important even, if only somewhat, somewhat meanly, to a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve her life. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice one of the cage kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly slide out from it from, it from underneath its hiding place. 
Nice, everyone's working like a team down here. Arata does not look at the kid, but sneers a bit. She reaches towards him, and he appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, you notice the screw slowly slides back under the thing. She re releases him from his breathing problems, resumes her pleasant expression, and takes another sip from the callus. You guys, that was against the rules. <laughs> You decide to make a note of it. Your friend runs a tight ship down here. You respect that. Are you serious? About an hour later, you have all four legs on, plus some other accoutrements attached. You wrestle mightily with the thing to get it upright, using your only good arm. It seems she may have forgotten about the final missing screw. You doubt the table needs it. You decide you won't bring it up if you won't. You give, it, you give it a test. It's pretty wobbly since you're only able to tighten the screws with her bare fingers, but again, she doesn't seem to mind. She reclines and has a look on her face which makes her appear absolutely enamored of your handiwork. She has finished her drink and the callus is on a side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor towards her. It looks like some sort of spider. Oh no, the size of an average dog, what the fuck? We are getting some big spiders over here. Its abdomen is purposely large. Actually, you think it's a huge tick? That's what it looks like. It settles just in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. It settles under their weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? You shrug and sit down on the rather wrinkly table. You're about to lie down, but she interrupts you. No. You fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. Goddamn. You stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at the caged kid, she raises an arm towards him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his own cage, which apparently was unlocked. He shuffles vacantly over to your table and lies down on its surface. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do. What? You didn't think you'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? You aren't sure what table stickball is. Oh, you really are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of arena stickball played on a table. Got it? You don't, but you're not. <laughs> now, go to it. Mm -hmm. You shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do, since the thing comes fitted with shackles. She gets up and fits her huge cheek-like pet. It makes more grumpy noises. She plops the enormous thing right down on the kid's chest. He appears rendered unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> and begins to feed. No, no! She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark rust color blood ripples from the place where it has attached to the boy's neck. We're just noticing murder. Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process, proud almost. Then she looks at you expectantly. Well, you don't know what she means. <laughs> the final screw. Aren't you going to retrieve it and screw it into whatever it needs to go? The job isn't done. It doesn't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Of course. What were you thinking? You should have known your friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it could. You stop... Stoop? You stoop very low to the ground, on your knees, placing your cheek just above the floor. You peer under a large edif edifice. It's dark in there and goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn little screw to roll. You take a few pitiful swipes with your good arm, but come up empty. It must be further back. You think you can see it? Yeah, that must be it, just a little further. You have an idea. A two would be helpful. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. Hmm. How did she know? Your new friend must be very wise. You think you're liking her more every minute. You grab the screwdriver and feel around with it. You, yes, you got it, you think. You carefully scrape it closer to yourself and then pick it up. You then go back to the table and find the one remaining hole you're left unscrewed. You slide under the table as a mechanic with a car. There, there it is. The table is cracking and wobbling quite a bit now. The thick is really getting to its dinner, it seems. 
All the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. Ardata has returned to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some settings on the feet, controlling the zoom of the camera and typing some remarks into a chat window. Well, it looks like we're going to be pranked. <laughs> this is very good material today. It's not often that I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. Oh no, she's a YouTuber. Run! Go on, complete your project. This will be very good. You still think it's weird that she likes watching you put furniture together so much, but you're not one to judge friends. Sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. <laughs> You screw in the final screw, but the stresses on the table are causing the holes to be mislined. This won't be easy. The huge thick shifts into Proto's body above you, causing the table to creak loudly. You nervously slide halfway off, out from under the table to check it out. Oh shit. <laughs> then I'll pop. Then the sound of scrapping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is. You think a little too late, you really need that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically out from underneath it at once. Like a baby deer on ice, the table platform comes crushing down on your lower torso. Ow, my ribs! Breaking your pelvis, no! <laughs> Not the pelvis, man! You, you bellow in pain and flail to pull yourself out. Oh no! You forget that you're still holding the screwdriver in your desperate flailing, you plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the thick log get better, which begins gushing rust blood with great force, spraying your entire upper body and face, let's go, that's what you get. The beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming, you can't see your new friend due to the blood in your eyes, but you can imagine she's thrilling about what's going on here. <laughs> your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso out from under this shitty table, you have an idea. With your broken arm, you start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you clutch the screwdriver handle with your other hand hard, ouch! <laughs> The blood gushing monster starts kicking and hearing, then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig at a rodeo. You hold you hold on for dear life, still blind, but your plan works. You've been pulled out from under the tomb you spent the last hours constructing for yourself. She's just <laughs> Your pelvis is in ruins, but at least you're free now and riding like the wind. As you and the blood sweeping tick go tearing around the room, crashing into stuff, you hear a boy crying. You guess Ardata became distracted enough by your foolish display to seize her paralyzing method on him. Or maybe distracted is the wrong word. Maybe she's disappointed by your foolishness? Oh god, you might be blowing it right now. Bro, you cannot be serious right now. Where are we? <laughs> The tick swerves suddenly and starts running up the stairs. Ow, ow, ow. Your brittle pelvis feels every step of the way up. It currents through the rest of the hive, crashes through the front door, then comes to a sudden halt. You're catapulted violently over its backside and sail 50 yards through the air. God damn. You land on your ass and wipe the blood from your eyes. Okay, this was embarrassing, but everyone makes mistakes, right? You can still salvage this friendship, you know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. Ardata is standing in her doorway with a furious look on her face. She's flipping you off. You will not be my friend. Thank God, honestly. <laughs> no! Not again! <laughs> Get the hell out of there. First, you clear your head and try to think innocent thoughts. Fluffy clouds in the sky, ironing some clothes, a winning touchdown pass from the sports. Ardata's long black hair is spilling over her cloak, her weight. These are not innocent odds, shut it down, shut it down. <laughs> There's no time for thinking, you have to act. You hurl the screwdriver her at her and run. She calmly lifts a hand towards one of the kids in the cages. The kid tenses up and lifts a hand in the direction of the screwdriver. The screwdriver freezes mid-air, right in front of Ardata's head. 
We run up the stairs, she twitches a finger, the cage kid does a full body spasm, and the screwdriver goes swaling towards you. It stabs deep in your leg. Ow, man! And you buckle over, tumbling backwards down the stairs. You are crumpled hip, hip at the bottom of the stairs, bleeding, and your finger arm is broken in two places now. That didn't seem very friendly to me. Luckily for you, I'm very determined to make relationships work. Even ones with people who flee simple furniture assembly projects. Fuck you. She stands over you. You attempt to pull the screwdriver out of your leg, but your entire body locks up. You can't move. She holds an up outstretched hand just above you. You shouldn't try to move yet. And you certainly shouldn't try to pull out the screwdriver. You get blood everywhere. To my... To my three little eyes, under the present conditions, it seems to me that only one of us should attempt walking up those stairs. If you're relieved, perhaps she has some alien means of levitating you up the stairs? Wait, no. Your body is tensing up again, it's moving with all your permission. Oh no, she's mind controlling us! You get to your feet without taking the screwdriver out. Wow, that hurts. What is she making you? Wait, what? She can be. You use both of your arms and all your strength and pick her up entirely. Are you serious? <laughs> Bro, the pain from your arm is excruciating. Arms with broken bones are not meant for heavy lifting. <laughs> the additional weight on your wounded leg isn't great either. You hold her as a groom will hold a bride. She wraps her arms around your neck to hang on to you in what strikes you as an overly familiar manner. She looks directly into your eyes and grins. This is better. Now, onward and upward, new friend. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> your legs begin to operate with all your consent. They wobble and struggle under the eight. The wound throbs. You lumber back up the long flight of stairs, carrying her all the way. Goddamn, that gotta hurt, man. You take her back to the kitchen and, and set her down in a chair, set her in a table. You didn't think I'd forget about dinner time, did you? Let's put your unfriendly behavior behind us. It's a good thing for you that I'm be benevolent enough to overlook disgusting acts of betrayal. You may have noticed I keep several friends in my hive who I have similarly forgiven. Consider that transgression blood beneath the abattoir. You exile. Now that she mentions it, yes, you are hungry. Maybe a warm meal will lift your spirits and get this here tougher, turbulent friendship back on track. Maybe you even get the chance to pull the screwdriver out of your leg. <laughs> you pull out a chair and attempt to sit down, but your legs locked up. And then you stand again. Apparently this was not the right thing to do. Oh, but why are you sitting? There's cooking to be done. This bitch, I swear. You stagger mechanically over to the fridge and open it. You pull out a large hawk of some sort of alien mystery meat and put it on the counter. With her broken arm, you reach in anguished for a big dangly meat cleaver. You chop the hawk, wincing with each swing of the cleaver. You place the sliced meat in a frying pan, swear it lightly, and serve it on a plate very rare, just the way your new friend likes it. Ew. <laughs> you didn't know that's the way she likes it, but you surmi surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat, since technically she's the one doing the cooking. You put it on the table in front of her, along with a fork and knife beside it. Your muscles relax as you apparently are allowed to control your own body again. She does nothing, except for look at you with a pleasure expression. You eye the meat in front of her, then the meat on the corner and the chair on the other side of the table. What should you do? Prepare a play for yourself? Is that what she wants you to do? Well, it looks like you're confused. Isn't it obvious what to do next under a volation? A good friend would know what to do. In fact, I don't think a good friend would take nearly as long as to decide the right thing to do next is. It actually seems to me that a very rude friend will hesitate for as long as you are hesitating. Or perhaps someone who is not a friend at all. Holy shit, she's making mind games, I'm not very good at those. You begin to sweat again. You clearly don't have much time to make up your mind. Yeah, I, I mean, she's, she's literally come up with finals and I haven't studied for them. 
If you wait for even a few seconds longer, you'll probably be guilty of being a bad friend, maybe even a dreadful one. That's not the type of person you like to think you are. What will you do? Feed her. Oh, fuck. This feels like the only obvious thing to do. She is looking up at you quite expectantly. You reach for the fork with your good arm. You go for the knife with your other... Ow. You can do it. The arm is much less versatile when the muscles are not being forced via psychic override to disregard the pain response. Nevertheless, she looks at you patently and smiles. That's nice of her, you think. <laughs> not to be mad about it. You feel like you're growing closer to your new friend by the minute. That's great. You put the fork down and pick up the knife with your good arm. You cut the meat into several pieces with a careful swaying motion. You put the knife down and pick up the fork and stab a piece. You put it close to her mouth. She seems pleased. Very good. Nice technique. Well-sized morsels, too. Thank you. She chews the meat with excellent form. She has very good table manners, you think. When she finishes the pieces, you slide off some more and continue. The meat looks very good. Your mouth is broadening, but she doesn't offer any. Oh well, when it's the right time for you to eat too, you're sure she'll let you know. Oh, I'm sure she'll let us know. Is that various types of blood? The meal is finished, there is no more meat, except for a few pieces of unchewed gristle, which you did not try to feed her. That would be toughless, very bad service. She reclines and steps her fingers, looking quite pleased with how the evening has gone so far. <laughs> you aren't sure why she's laughing, did you do something funny? <laughs> oh my, what a fool. You point at yourself, wondering if she's referring to you. We don't know why you've done that was foolish, if so. Oh, I, I can I can pinpoint a list, you know, you know, uh, several things. You're also still not sure what she finds so amusing. Probably our clown face, I guess. I'm not laughing. <laughs> ha. She pauses her laughter for a minute and just she crying. <laughs> oh my god, we, we just got kidnapped by a by a maniac pixie, not pixie cut, but pixie soul cut, girl. Then Zoli begins to frown. A faint blue tear rolls down her cheek from her bottom eye. The truth is, I don't even know why I'm laughing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Run! If our leg wasn't literally stabbed, we should be running. This isn't very funny. What's happening here? <laughs> It was a good dinner. You did a good job, whoever you are. She puts her face in both of her hands and sobs quietly. You have no idea what to do about this. You stand there, still holding the fork, feeling a bit useless. There is a lot of pressure, you know. Being so respected and, and admired for your high status in this world. Rich people problems. I didn't ask for this, to be superior. <laughs> To so many. Much is except of you. Much is presumed about what your personality will be before you even develop one. You work hard and build a brand based only on what you think people assume you should be like. Sometimes I wonder, am I even that good at being sinister? Could I be more sinister if I tried harder? Maybe this is not my true calling after all. You begin to offer words of sympathy. This is all seems heartbreaking to you, your poor new friend. But your jaw muscles contract and your mouth shuts involuntarily. <laughs> okay. Because it's not your turn to speak yet? Okay, that works for you. You like to be a good listener to your friends. But what would happen if I changed my brand? If I stopped being so sinister online? My friends and followers will deride and reject me. And my superiors will eat me alive. If I show weakness, if I scale back of my bloodthirsty content, do I incur the scorn of a wise-ass clown with a hundred million subscribers? I mean... I don't know. Will I be in a cage someday, listening to a fucking fool honk his horn for legs? I mean, maybe... No, I must persist. 
How lonely it is to know this is all I can do until the day I leave this planet. I have no material for sensory comforts left for me here. Until I get on a ship and fly away, pain is my only solace. Your hand holding the fur grips it tighter. You're horrified to realize what it is in the process of doing. You bring it down hard on her hand, which is placed flat on the table. She doesn't flinch or react in any way. Look, I, I don't want to hurt anyone, but if it takes, I I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Three trails of cerulean blood flow from the tides where they pierce her skin. That wasn't friendly, you think? <laughs> You think! <laughs> but then, you weren't the one who did it, right? Where were you? You're so confused. My subscribers are not real friends. They adore me only for my sinister content, the show I'll provide, my wicked, infectious laughter. I get jealous of them sometimes because they get to watch my content. It must be thrilling, I think. But maybe I'm just jealous of them because they got to be people who aren't me? Look, girl. I think you're lost in the character, O'Neill, because, you know, maybe like, try some new hobbies. <laughs> this is fucking deep, I know. Apologies for you, cannot really. <laughs> she pulls the fork out of her hand and lays it gently on the plate of gristle you didn't feed her. The people downstairs in their cages aren't my friends either. Yeah, I don't really think they consider you a friend. Sorry to break it to you. They act like they're my friends though, and sometimes I even believed it. But they don't really want to be friends with me. I mean, I don't blame them, girl. Nobody does. No shit. The only person who has ever really wanted to be my friend, who's ever tried to be, is you. For some reason, you clear your throat and point to yourself innocently. That's it. I've decided. You have passed the test. You will become my friend, officially. Does that mean I can get medical supplies? As such, I think every word is in order. You are overjoyed, your heart starts racing, you can't believe it, a new real friend. But you don't have much time to enjoy this achievement, your body is doing something again. You bend down in a strained motion and pick up the plate and fork. You position the plate over your wide open mouth and scrap in all the remaining gristle and begin chewing. Ew! It's virtually inedible. Your mouth humors the egg of chewing for two seconds and then you swallow all of it whole in one painful gulp. Tastes like friendship. I guess we got a friendship, but at what cost? So honestly, what the fuck was that? Uh, <laughs> are that the was streaming torturing people like in some weird what can only be summarized as a deep web stream <laughs> maybe but instead of deep web is like just your regular streaming service what i gathered here is basically she does this for a living because she's afraid of becoming one of these people as what we can understand from the troll society if she doesn't like get respect stabilize herself as a very powerful troll maybe she will be like ridiculized by other trolls or she will become one of the victims of like higher castes maybe i don't know honestly fuck you girl i don't want to be your friend let's check this one dude out Yes, someone is approaching. A strange, gray-skinned alien with a cozy-looking vest. Perhaps they will make for a good friend. What's up? Oh, hang on, sorry. I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird looking. Kind of uncomfortable about this. Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in some need of medical treatment. You're also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right now, right about now. Hungry, uh... I see what your game is. You aren't sure what he's talking about, then your eyes drift towards the obvious target, that exquisite hot dog he's holding. I mean... I don't know about exquisite, but... I guess... I guess it is. It looks really, really good. Your mouth starts watering noticeably. Oh no. I knew it. 
You just like all the rest. Your agenda is to have me requilish my delicacy. Well, forget it. I've been tricked out of two other oblong meat projects this week already. I know you probably think I'm an easy mark due to my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. You don't know anything about his blood color or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. You're hungry, sure, but I didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All you really want want is to well, all you really want is to do is <laughs> what? Why you really want to <laughs> well, all you really want is to do is make a new <laughs> but are you having a stroke? So you don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. I just want a friend and not my sweet meat. <laughs> Sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful. Folks tend to get that greedy look in their eyes around like warm sausage. These are odd ways to express the thing he's saying, you think. But it would be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the subject. That is bossing friendship moving in the right direction. Ask if he lives nearby. Ask if you can have a bite of his hot dog. It looks amazing. I'm gonna ask if he lives nearby. Yeah, or I used to. I mean, my place was bombed by drones a while ago. Now I don't have a hive, but I'm making it work out here. Foraging for tasty things when I can. I've gotten pretty good at it. Talking people into giving me meat products, I mean. You can really feel a sense of pity for your new friend. You thought you had a rough crash landing here, hungry and friendless. And come to think of it, feels like your arm is broken? Your ribs too, maybe, but enough self-pity. How are we even alive? This is about making a new great friend. You ask your friend if there is anything you can do to improve his life. Oh, wait. Are we friends now? It, like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we slow it down a bit, see how things go? Not saying it's out of the question, I just think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. Someone I trust, you know, not just another looky loo gunning for my delicacy. Oh damn, you got out of your skins again. Of course, he's right, this is totally reasonable. You feel sure you can do what it takes to win him over. You make a mental note to avoid looking at or mentioning his hot dog, since he seems to be such a sensitive subject. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. You are aggressively not looking at it, in fact. You think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's working. You aren't thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he is even... He isn't even holding one, and no one ever, ever even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice, on some primal level, your current non-hot dog in mindset. He smiles. You pay closer attention to the boy's face. It's a nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming, a few freckled here and there, a mop of messy hair dropping over his eyes. What a nice friend this will be to have, you think. He's kind of adorable, really, if you disregard a prickly attitude about his dog dog. Okay, wait a minute. You don't want to start thinking thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down a little. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend, nothing more. You should try to spark up some non-meat related conversations soon before things get awkward. You wonder about his house. It got bombed. Yeah, you know, routine drone pass through my hood. A little bombing, a little cooling, that's how it goes around here. I was a lucky one, my losses, not so much. He's a goner. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! His parent died, no! <laughs> you don't know what a losers is, but you can deduce it was some someone important to him, who probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide the right place to show some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes I think I enjoy savory bun delights as a way of covering up the pain. <laughs> no.
no! <laughs> They're so good though, it's hard to stop. Yeah, I know. I feel you, buddy. Also, I favor the juicy meat. Before he died anyway. It's something we did together. <laughs> How did we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it, please, dude. Don't break it up again. You didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy's clearly grieving. You see two faint red tears roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can take it. You have to console this homeless boy somehow. Then he'll definitely be your friend. But what to do? Oh shit. Wait. We saving. We saving. <laughs> Give him a friendly pat on the back. Give him a reassuring hug. Um, so... I don't think we should startle him, so maybe like give him a friendly pat on the back because if I go for a hug, maybe he'll think I'm trying to steal his hot dog. Pat on the back. You keep it simple and pat him on the back a couple times, everything is going to be okay. Since you're his new friend, or at least working towards earning that status, he has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together, your friendly gesture worked. You're alright. I should let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I can live off the land of for the rest of my life, scrounging for scrumptious indulgences wherever I may find them. By rummaging through awful drums or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I'll miss my losses, but I think he would be proud of me. If I can make it without him, if I can survive on my own, I know he would be proud. Maybe I don't even need to leave the planet? Maybe I can avoid taking the order ordeals altogether. Can't test who you can't find. If I play my cards right, I can probably live to ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. Like hiding in allies and sewers, Scrapping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. Honestly, I don't even need to get by that long, since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. So I think I might just be able to make this work. You look confused at that last remark, but again, don't want to be impolite. He holds up his hand as if to tell you not to bother. I can tell you're not from here, it's okay. Rust plus don't live a long time. Blood classes ra higher than me live progressively longer than higher you go up. Sea dwellers live basically forever. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it is. It'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle into a nice short ride, keep a low profile, take in some good meat along the way. Nothing wrong with that life, if you ask me. You understand, it seems like a tragic story, but if your friend has made peace with his destiny, you might as well too. You offer a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds not looking at his dog dog at all. <laughs> he smiles again, he seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog a little less tidy. That's good. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude towards meaty delights to be strange and off-putting. I've heard his more than once and lost some friends that way. <sighs> there are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me. No offense, but you are. Drums will vaporize a hornless goof like you, no questions asked. Oh sorry, didn't mean to scare you. You laugh it off, you're not scared, you say. You survive worse, you pay your broken ribs and wince. You clutch your no sore ribs with your broken arm, and wins even harder because of that. Oh man, looks like that arm's hurt, huh? Guess it's broken, let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this a second. Oh my god, he's trusting me to hold his hot dog! He hands you his hot dog without hesitation. Oh wow, he wants you to hold it. 
This is such a remarkable gesture to trust. You're overwhelmed. You gingerly take the hot dog with your good arm, being very careful. Yeah, please don't drop it. You hold the hot dog from beneath your arm fingerpits as if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. Then he takes off his shirt. You avert your eyes for a moment and realize that's silly. Nothing particularly indecent about this, you suppose. If he's comfortable, so are you. Then he puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you and hands you the shirt. Here, make a sling out of it. He's right. It does help. Your arm, your broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. This shirt smells like meat too. You can tell if you think that's a bonus or if it's weird. <laughs> you decide it's a bonus. This is your new friend. He loves meat and so do you. It's your greatest common interest in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm ready to officially call you my friend yet, but I may be getting close. You're pushing all the right buttons, man. Just being someone who listens and understands, you have no idea how much that means to me. You're so happy to hear this, it makes your heart sing. Aww. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just a little strange, like maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly by his closest, you guess? You think that might be his dad, but again, you don't dare ask. Not when, he, when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why kill the mood? He gets a little closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. For the briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes regarding you fondly. Your heart beats a little faster. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You're, you're starting to wonder if all he's interested in his friendship. They hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship or really companionship of any sort, but that's mostly pretty fast for you. But you're too nervous to make your feelings clear on all this. If he goes any further, you're not sure if you have the will to protest. Listen, dude, this gorgeous meat product we both admire. I'm thinking maybe we shared it. <laughs> He's got a share his dog dog with me. I think that sounds good actually. Oh my, yes, yes, he's, he's sharing the food. That sounds wonderful. You're so hungry and you're beside yourself with gratitude that Diamond, Diamond? Diamond? Is willing to share with you something so precious to him. It really means a lot. Here, I have an idea. He brings his face close to yours. Oh no. He holds the hot dog up between your faces, with both ends of the dog pointing to his mouth and yours. You're not sure what he, he wants you to do? You can't find the breath to ask, it seems like he wants you to eat the hot dog with him, lady and the tramp style. <laughs> sure. Yes, if pressed on it, your greedy act is uncomfortably erotic, but you have to admit it is a good way to share a food item. We list ensuring it gets split about evenly. I don't I don't know what how I feel about this band. And you absolutely loathe the idea of letting a friend down. It's completely at odds with your values as a person. You trump down on your end of the hot dog as he does with his and simultaneously. Holy shit that is so good. You take another bite and he times his bite perfectly. He's an eerily good at this game. It's throwing you off for chewing a bit, which makes you cough a little when you swallow. But you don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rim with him. <laughs> Might be what a bad friend would do. Oh no, he's getting closer, I don't know how I feel about this. You keep going without really quite swallowing as you do. You're gonna, you're gonna gag. You get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you aren't sure how we're going to handle. You haven't a plan for it, and it's coming up fast. The hot dog backlog collecting in your throat is getting a bit too heavy, so you try to swallow, but you can't. You gag, I, I, I knew, and cough up all the true hot dog matter explosively into his face. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> he recoils, absolutely stunned, his bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you with white eyes. Hot dog and bun bits are all over his face. He says nothing for a moment and puts his hand to his throat. Oh fuck, he's choking. <laughs> no! 
He points at his mouth desperately. You need to do something. The Hamlet, of course. That's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life. Do you even have the capacity of doing that with a broken arm and broken ribs right now? You get behind him and put your good arm around his belly and form a fist. You plunge the fist in under his ribs, trying to dislodge his masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. It really hurts though. You have to make the sacrifice for your friend. Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick you into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. You're not sure how you will navigate that trickly subject once he's briefing again, but you'll deal with that later. Right now, you have a life to save. You pull your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze. You try and try and try, his face is turning, well, not blue. Deep red? You guess cause his blood is rust color? Sure, that makes sense. You yank one more time, your broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge gob of chew hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball and the expulsion creates enough force in the other direction it causes you to actually lift him up into the air and accidentally suplex him into the mud behind you. You in turn go tumbling over him and the two of you are soon locked into an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll down the grassy incline towards a nearby neighborhood, towards a, a street. Luckily, you stop just short of the street, but Diamond's neck lands right on the sharp edge of the car. My god! <laughs> and after flipping in the air once or twice, you come down right on his face with a big ass, you hear a crack. No, we killed him, what the fuck? <laughs> Demon, you slap his cheek a little. No response, he's not breathing. You check his mouth. Throat is clear of hot dog Edwards. Oh god. This can't be happening. You look around, panicked. This isn't what you need right now. All you wanted to was a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. <laughs> How? You have to hide a body. <laughs> you see a couple kids creeping out of nearby houses to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You've got to find a bush or something. There, over there, looks like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but you'll have to do. You drag the vested shirtless carcass over the bush. You dump the body in the bush and it's really not convincing. It looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of his man. <laughs> in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. You've got to come with a better... Wait a minute, someone is standing behind you. Oh no, not her. Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. This is what good friends do. You killed him. No. Man. No. Okay, give him a reassuring hug. You open your arms and approach him with a posture of great compassion. You furrow your brow upwardly a bit, as if to say, I know, I know how hard it is. <laughs> you advance, and he leans backward a little, as if caught off guard by your sympathy. Maybe you're coming on too strong? Yeah, that's what I said. But you know there's no turning back now. You don't just throw the breaker on an imminent heartfelt hug like this. You embrace him awkwardly, and he goes well for a moment until you realize your arm is broken and it seizes up refugiously in pain. Yeah, I knew it was gonna happen. He jostles the hot dog in his hand and he bubbles it. You both gasp. You try to detach from the hug so you can catch the dog, but it's already on its way to the ground. In your attempt to save it, you stagger backwards and slip. The hot dog gets mushed under a big dumb ass the moment it makes contact with the ground. Demon lets out a shriek. I mean, at least is the hot dog and not his fucking neck. No! No. Oh. Dude. Dude, my dog. You scramble to get up in time, hoping you're not as old as it looks. But your feet keep slipping and your butt keeps greening the hot dog into the mud. When the carnage finally subsides, you roll over and check it out. It's completely unsalvageable. Just a gross, meaty mud mesh, like the hot dog never even existed. Demon holds in agony and slumps backward against a tree. Oh no, you fucked this up so bad. That's it, man. I've lost everything. <laughs> 
I'm not sure what the point is of even living anymore. <laughs> You're absolutely mortified by your clumsiness and foolishness. You have a feeling you'll be thinking about this moment for years to come, during those insecure moments when your mind seems to be looking for any excuse to make yourself cringe with self-doubt and shame. Still, you can't help but feel this guy is being a little unreasonable. It's just one hot dog. There are probably plenty more of those to come by for those who know where to look in this strange world. He himself said he makes a habit of enjoying these, so they can't be all that in common. Maybe he just has an unusual psychological disorder surrounding a fixation on this particular food item. Yes, that could be it, poor guy. It just means he needs your support as a friend all the more. You won't give up on your friends. Or for that matter, people who you're trying desperately to become friends with. That just isn't who you are as a person. You have an idea. You run in by him with a sense of optimism and salesmanship. The past is behind you, there is no need to swallow in self-incrimination and guilt over the hot dog incident. Demon perks up a little. You... you want to help me get another a hot dog? Absolutely! It could be a fun adventure, you say, something to bond over, to bring two new buddies closer together. Okay, you don't say that out loud, but you really hope it's true. I don't know. Could be a long shot. Sometimes it can be days before I'm united with another plum treat. Glistening with perspiration. Steaming, relaxing comfortably in a soft melt in your mouth loaf. Damn. Now I really want a hot dog. I guess I don't have much choice but to take you up on your offer, do I? What do you have in mind? It's a good question, you haven't made a plan yet, and frankly, you don't even know where to begin, but he's interested in spending more time with you, which is the most important thing. You figure something out. You decide a display of confidence is called for here, a real show of leadership to improve moral. You smile, hold your head up high, and tell him to follow you. You know exactly what to do. Well, not really, but you give no indication of that at all. Yeah, it's important to be confident, you know. He's definitely intrigued. You've got him hooked now, you think. He's probably wondering if he hit pay, di pay dirt, finding a new friend with the hot dog hookup. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where to find a hot dog, but you've got to admit you're enjoying the feeling of being important and valued by a potential friend. You don't want to do anything under underhanded, yet you can't help but feel you should probably milk the social gambit for all it's worth. This way, you say, as you begin marching confidently in a random direction, he obediently follows and begins rubbing his tummy. You begin to feel nervous almost immediately, you have absolutely no idea how this is going to play out or if it stands any chance of resulting in a hot dog at the end of the journey. Oh well, you figure something out along the way. You lead him through streets and windling through yards of strange looking houses and he follows. He takes care to make sure you both are not seen, which could get you both into trouble, apparently. The improvised circuitous route appears to provoke his suspicion. Dude, are you sure you know where the dog is? It seems like maybe you're lost. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely sure you know where to find one, you say. You're just throwing anyone off the trail who might have been following you. He nods sullenly, as if it, that makes perfect sense. Phew. But you can't keep him guessing like this forever. You've got to do something, make some bold action to keep his interest in this linear quest. You say, this way, down here. This is a shortcut to the hot dog supplier privy to. It's the mother load. Um, in the sewer? Yes, totally. It's just a short trick through the sewer. It shouldn't be more than another hour or several of sewer trundling. That is, if he still has the will to do what it takes to get his hands on more juicy dogs. Oh, hell yeah. You know it. After you, man. Okay, we just went to the sewer. An hour later, you're so deep in the sewer, you've lost all bearings in sense of direction. You could be anywhere by now, you've taken so many crazy turns. Still, you don't let up for a second that you're lost. You've made each turn with decisive conviction. It's all that matters, man. He's still following you, but now he's having trouble keeping up. He's out of breath and struggling with the foul smell. Can't say you're enjoying it much either, but you can't let on the, f the fact that what you're doing now is anything other than the most casual routine for you. Like you do this every day, just a quick jowl through the sewer to heat up his vast medical trove of meat products. 
Okay, when you put it in that way, maybe this all sounds a bit insane. Still, you're too deep to second guess yourself now. Hey, I gotta... I gotta stop and rest. I can't lie, I'm starving for a heavenly Frankfurter. But this might be too much for me. I don't think I'm cut out for this. You pause and look back, he's sitting down now, slumping against a filthy sewer wall. You're intensively relieved to see you may have just won this impromptu game of sewer hot dog chicken. But more importantly than that, this looks like an ideal time to show more sympathy and have a bonding moment with your will-be friend. You sit next to him and with your broken arm, put a hand on his knee in a platonic but deeply understanding way. Your arm hurts when you do this, but it's worth it. Every little gesture counts when making a new friend. I just... I kinda suck, Alyssa's is gone, I don't have any skills, and most people think I'm weird for liking hot dogs so much. I'm probably just going to get cooled. I mean, I feel you, man. I also like have a very questionable, intense relationship with fried chicken. I'm not good at going on adventures or doing anything hard. All I'm good at is finding an easy meal here and there, however I can get it. I like talking people out of their fine sausages using tricks or other ploys which end up losing my friends. It's been unthinkable that anyone would actually do anything nice for me or would want me to have that sweet sweet meat I desire. <laughs> At least it was unthinkable until now. Your heart begins to race. Could it be? Is is this shitty improvised sewer escapade actually working? You can believe it. Nobody's ever done so much or worked so hard to try to get my hands on another magnificent banger. <laughs> Sorry for being emotional, but like, this is new for me. I don't know how to handle it. I'm, I'm just so, so grateful. It'd be true to call you a friend, man. Whatever you are. You're overjoyed. Unbelievable. It's almost too good to be true. Why now? It's such a sudden turn of good fortune. I hardly know what to do. Should. Should you hug the guy? Last time that didn't go so well, but this time he's not holding a hot dog for you to clumsily disfile, so maybe this is your moment. Wait. What's that? A deep, humbling sound begins to echo through the tunnels. Oh shit. They found us. It's a drone, dude, I guess on like sewer duty. We gotta run. He gets up, grabs your hand, and sprints. He's a lot faster than he looks when motivated to get moving. I mean, nothing motivates you more than fucking dying, I guess. He turns his way and that and the rumbling gets closer. Oh no, it's just sewer water. But he slips on something and you both tumble into a river of horrific sludge. Bro, I can't swim. No, are you kidding me? Help. Your bad arm finds perches on the ledge and though it's very painful, you heroically salvage your friend from the muck with the other arm. You bust through a lid on the floor, and you both flop out of the hole, drenched in filth, smelling horrible and completely exhausted. But at least you're safe, you think. Hey man, just want you to know, even though we didn't find the glorious treasure you were leading us to, I'm happy how it all turned out. Maybe I don't need hot dogs in my life as much as I thought, maybe that's not the real treasure after all. It's been a journey for me, let me tell you. I'm learning so much about myself, about life, because of you. His bushy hair is licked back from his eyes due to the sludge. Yuck. He's giving you a penetrating, soulful gaze of presumably pure friendship, or is it even deeper than that? Wow, this is intense, huh? Then something catches your eye just above him, something dangling, lots of dangling things actually. Come to think of it, it's really cold in here, freezing in fact. You finally realize, holy shit, you're the weird alien meat locker. You're absolutely surrounded by dangly meat products, including many sausages. Thousands of them, you begin to sob. <laughs> it's just no way. Your sobbing soon turns to under strained wailing of raw catharsis. He joins you and the tears flow freely from you both. You embrace each other and let it all out. Suddenly it hits you, both of you. This is by far the happiest day of your life. <laughs> Meet heaven. They're, but they're both sucked in sludge, man. 
This is disgusting.